When you use a sewing machine, the quality of your thread is super important. Never use thread that's really old, really linty, or pretty much anything that you got in a value bucket. Those little itty bitty threads that come with hand sewing kits usually aren't great for sewing machines. Anything that's really, really inexpensive probably also isn't good either. That said, you don't have to pay a fortune for thread, but there are some good quality brands that you know that you'll get good thread. One of the most common brands you'll see is Coates and Clark. These are available at Joann's and Walmart, and you can usually get them for a good deal, especially if they're on sales. These are great options if you're just starting to sew, but it is a good investment and it will save a lot of frustration if you have good thread in your machine. It usually comes in two different types of spools. This type of spool has a little groove that holds the end of your thread. This one, as you can see here, has a little notch that's cut in the edge of the plastic that holds your thread. Another common brand that's readily available is Guterman. I love Guterman thread and it's really great too. It tends to be a little bit more expensive sometimes than the Coates and Clark, but both are excellent. So before you start sewing, make sure you have some good thread that you can use in your machine. You're also gonna to wanna to make sure that you have bobbins. It's really important to make sure that the type of bobbin that you're using is the type of bobbin that you need for your machine. Using the wrong type of bobbin can throw off your tension and break your machine. So make sure you have the correct bobbins. For most brother computerized sewing machines, you're going to want these clear plastic bobbins. This is an SA156 bobbin, um, and the size is really important. So make sure that the bobbins you have are for your machine. And let's go to the machine and thread. Brother vertical machines are very similar to the horizontal machines. This is a GX37 and it's a vertical mechanical machine by Brother. It's a good little machine. This machine has a vertical spool pin. Right now it's been pushed down for storage, but to use it, make sure you extend it so it's straight up. You're going to place your thread on your machine so that it is coming out the front. So right now you can see where the thread is winding. You want that thread to be coming around the front of the spool. So I'm gonna set my thread on the spool pin so that it's unwrapping from the front side. I'm gonna guide my thread over to the left-hand side over here. And on the left hand side, I have these guides to help me know where to thread. If I'm doing my bobbin, I'm gonna use this one. So you go around the metal arm, over to the front of the circle, back behind and around the circle, towards the front of the machine. So you're almost making an X with your thread. You have to have a full bobbin before you can sew, so it's always good to start by threading a bobbin. Take your thread and guide it to the center of the bobbin. Poke the end out through one of the holes from the center to the top. Slide the bobbin over to the right. Set the bobbin on the bobbin spool pin. Make sure it's all the way down. Push the bobbin to the right. Gently hold your thread up high and press your foot pedal. Once it's wound a bit, go ahead and stop. Trim off the thread at the top next to the plastic and keep filling. It should stop automatically. Trim your thread, push the bobbin to the left, and lift it off. This thread should be tight and evenly packed. If it's loose, lumpy, or looks like it's falling off, then you'll want to redo your bobbin. Once your bobbin's been filled, you're ready to thread the rest of the machine. Place your spool on your spool pin, just as you did for threading the bobbin, and guide it over to the left. 
This time we're going to use this diagram. We're simply going to go around that metal bar and up towards the front. When you bring your thread to the front of the machine, it's going to go down this right hand side groove and pull it straight down and it's going to go under this little bar and pull it to the left. Inside the left hand groove is a metal bar. Lift your needle using your hand knob until that metal bar is all the way at the top. Then lift your thread up. To do this step, I like to hold my thread up high. I'll rest my thread against the right hand side of that groove. I'll pull it up towards the back, still resting it on the right hand side, and then I'll move it over to where it's resting against the left hand side and slide it down. When I do this, my thread gets caught on this metal hook. Then guide your thread straight down. Now we're almost ready to put it through the needle. There's one more step. Make sure that your machine is off so you don't accidentally poke yourself. Hold the thread down low. Grab the thread with your left hand. We need to place the thread through this groove. So I have it held in my left hand. I'm going to grip it just a little bit away with my right hand. This gives me a horizontal section of thread. I'm going to lift my thread up high horizontally and over that little bar. And I'll let it go with my left hand and my thread is now around that hook. This is really important as it will help the thread stay next to the needle. For the next part, you can thread by hand. Simply cut your thread and slide it from the front to the back of the needle. Make sure the thread is freshly cut. Hold it really close to the end. And slide it from front to back. Make sure that there are no loops and it's not caught on anything. Once your needle is threaded, lift your foot and place your thread under the foot from front to back. If you want to use your needle threader, make sure that your needle is in the highest position. Make sure that your presser foot is down. This is your needle threader right here. It only works when your needle is in the highest position. And this is the lever that lets you use it. So as you push this lever down, you're going to hook your thread underneath this hook. And then we're gently going to pull it to the right at the same time. So I'm going to go under that hook, press this down, and pull the thread to the right. I'm going to keep pressing on my guide until the second arm, the second hook, goes around my needle. Hold your thread horizontally. Right here through the eye of the needle there's now a teeny tiny hook. So hold your thread low below that hook. Then lift it up higher so that it goes under the hook. Then gently at the same time move the lever so that the hook moves away and release the thread gently with your right hand. This makes a little loop of thread that goes behind the needle and you can now pull that thread and your needle is threaded. Lift your presser foot up, slide the thread under, and to the back. Now let's add the bobbin. Your bobbin cover could look like this or it could look like those on the computerized machines but for this type of cover you slide it forward and lift it off and then grab your bobbin. There's usually a diagram on your machine that shows you how your bobbin should be wound. So you want your thread coming off the back side so you want the thread to be away from you. Then slide the bobbin in the casing. On 
bobbin casing, there's this little metal hook. We want our thread to go around that hook. I'm going to take it and take my thread, and it's still on the same side as the bobbin, and I'm going to go in front of that little hook and around. And I want my thread to be pointing towards this little groove here. Once it's pointing towards that little groove, I can put my cover back on and then guide my thread through that little groove and pull it. And there's a little blade right there that you can cut your thread. If your top thread is really long, you can trim it off on the cutter on the side of your machine.